This is a HeadGum Podcast. Here's a question. What is care slash of? Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service made from effective quality ingredients personally tailored for your exact needs. So I got an email and they were like, take this quiz. So I took a quiz, super easy, super fun, super chill, lots of pictures, truly kept me engaged, bright colors, good for me. And it literally designed the vitamins that I should be taking. And truly I read through it and I was like, this is right. I should be taking these vitamins. And there's tons of benefits to vitamins. So even if you try to maintain a healthy diet, guess what? It can be hard to get all those nutrients your body needs for long-term health. Vitamins also fill the important gaps that your body is missing from your diet. And get this, 90%. It's a lot of people. That's almost all the people. They fall short of the FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Also, the recommendations are built on clinical research with traditional medicine, with input from doctors and nutritionists. It includes individually wrapped packets with your specific vitamins and supplements for easy grab and go. Because you can't be shaking stuff out of bottles being like, what's this and the other thing? Nope, these are just wrapped up for you. And guess what? It costs about 20% less uh, when compared to similar brands at drugstores and local health food stores. So for 25% off your first month of personalized Care of Vitamins, visit careof.com and enter the promo code DATEME for 25%. I'm saying it again because you might have missed it, but you get 25 to 5% of your first month of personalized vitamins via Care of. Visit takecareof.com the promo code is date me what a treat you'll be swallowing big old vitamins in no time bye bye why won't you date me why won't you date me why won't you date Don't you date me? And I'm trying to figure out why I'm so single, even though I'll eat your booty. My <laughs> my guest today, ooh boy, she's very, very funny. She wrote for James Corden, and now she's currently the head writer of Drop the Mic on TBS, and she's written for so many things, and she does stand up, and she's so funny. Eliza Skinner! Me! Pew, 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 pew! Oh, Eliza, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real treat. We talk about online dating and just dating in general and how men are trash all the time. Yep. So it's nice to have it on the record that we both (laughs) think men are trash and terrible. Invite the world into the conversation. (laughs) So you, um, you're currently single, yes. Yes. And you online date, right? No. No? I, in theory... (laughs) In theory, I online date, mm-hmm. but it just so I I got rid of the, uh, you know I've gone from at points having all of the apps, mm-hmm. and now I'm down to just one. Uh, I got rid of Tinder, got rid of Bumble. Uh, too many guys on Bumble were like trying to uh, teach me how to be, um, you know, better at uh, feminism, social justice, and <laughs> music choices. Like I was just like, I don't need your lessons. I'm done. It's so much, so much daddying. <laughs> Um, and then on Tinder, I got screenshotted <gasps> twice Oh no! and put on Twitter, people being like, oh my God, look who I found. And I'm like, I'm not that kind of famous. I didn't sign up for that. I that sucks. Yeah. So I was like, well, I don't want to do this. It's almost like shaming you for being single and actively looking. Yeah. Well, it's also, I think that people think when you come up on their phone, you actually were like, ding dong. Do you mm-hmm. want to date me? Because, like, no, I didn't. No, I don't, not at all. Yeah. I just happened to have shown up in your feed. Yeah. I tried. That is, that's happened once to me. 
And I messaged the person. I was yep. like, do you mind taking this down? And the same has happened with, like, stand-up sets. I mean, I guess it's different. Where, like, someone has taken a clip mm-hmm. and, like, put it on YouTube. And I'm like, oh, you don't understand that if I haven't released it myself, it's still a work in progress. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like a dating profile. If I'm not taken, I'm still <laughs> a work in progress. <laughs> you need that sweatshirt. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh, yeah, I even re-signed up for it when I was traveling because my friends mm-hmm. have been like, Yo, when you're in England, it's going to be different. Was it different? Was it good? No. No. It wasn't. It was exactly the same. Uh, I did. I had a, a couple of guys sending me delightful gifts, which that was cute. Oh, okay. Um, but that also might have been like just the trend and I had been away from Tinder that long. And uh, I do think it is a trend now for men to send gifts. There we go. Because they're like, I'm cute and quirky. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you want to talk to me? Yeah. When, uh. I had, when I had left, it was, hey. I'm taking this seriously. And so now I guess it's... Really? Who needs to? Yeah. Ah, but, I've never had anyone say that they were taking this seriously. Well, not, not like say that, but have that attitude. That like, mm-hmm. so tell me about you. Like, whatever. I, ooh, I want to read to you a couple of Tinder conversations that I've had. Oh, God. So this man, Spencer, who... I guess I shouldn't say his name. I mean, who cares? <laughs> He's like... Not cute to me. Oh, no. I hope he doesn't listen to this. Wait, what are you doing? (laughs) I have a theory why he won't date you. (laughs) Well, I didn't say it to his face. And there's a hundred Spencers, maybe millions of Spencers in L.A. Okay. But this one's 26, and... I won't say where he went to school. <laughs> I mean, just give his phone number at this point. Well, it's Tinder. I don't have his phone number. Oh. He said, hey, Nicole, you have the prettiest smile I've seen this year. What do you like to do for fun? And for whatever reason, someone saying I have the prettiest smile they've seen all year, that's a lie. <laughs> Yeah. That's a flat out lie. Well, the, you the, saw a baby at some it, point. You saw like a like a gorgeous supermodel at some point. It feels like not only a it's such a lie that it's clearly a line. Yes. And I don't I'm not really mad at people cutting and pasting <laughs> lines cuz I'm like like I know I know, I've heard women get really upset about that and I'm like no. they don't know me yet. If I if I if if I have a conversation with them and they see undeniably how awesome I am and then still like try to cut paste stuff with me well then that sure i would be offended but it, i'm nobody to them at the first line it yeah it is the first line i am nobody to him i'm just mad it's a lie mm. you could he could have said i really That's love true. your smile it yeah like it's a beautiful smile not the prettiest smile you've seen all year and i know i'm being very petty no but i think that's a good thing to note lied off the first line yes that's i don't trust you now. this guy yeah so I lied back to him. Well, I didn't lie. I was just very, <laughs> he said, what do you like to do for fun? So I said, thank you for the prettiest smile. And then I said, I love shoplifting, which is <laughs> true, but an insane thing to say to someone <laughs> yeah. in a first message. Yep. I was trying to match his insanity. So then he said, what's the best thing you ever shoplifted? And if someone said to me, now I love I think shoplifting, I'd be like, um, you're a criminal, yeah. but I'm interested. <laughs> I don't know. I would have like addressed it. So then I said purses, very expensive ones. In my heyday, I love stealing coach bags. And then he said, nice. So what's the craziest shit you've ever done? I said, um, propsies, stealing a car or snorting meth. How about you? (laughs) (laughs) I stole a car once when I was in college and I accidentally snorted meth once. So they're all truths, but I was like, if I'm going to say something wild, like you have to acknowledge it. Yeah. So he acknowledged it by not messaging me after that. Well, good. So Spencer, bye bye. Oh and gosh. then let's see. I matched with this guy named, I guess I shouldn't say the names. His name is Derry. And he said, your t-shirt is a purple penis eater. Cause I'm holding a penis and uh, wearing a monster shirt. I'll show it to you in a little bit. And I said, it is. And he said, where's that Christmas tree? Because another picture's with a Christmas tree. Oh, he's like, look, I look at pictures. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm now re- rereading this. And I like literally, okay. Did you write back to him accidentally? <laughs> no. So he said, where's the Christmas tree? I said, Michigan. Then I said, Dari, where are you from? 
he said new york via maine i guess you i assume you're from michigan and i was like ew why michigan not thinking i had just told him that i had taken a picture <laughs> of michigan and he goes oh because of the tree i was like that's so weird that picture was taken at a wedding in michigan now i understand why he didn't respond back to you me because now i sound crazy <laughs> you sound ins- insane or just texting 18 million other people at the same uh, time that's what it was i yeah. was texting a whole bunch of people yeah that's always that's always flattering when i when i get a text and i'm like oh you are <laughs> definitely texting other people right now definitely was and i guess now i feel bad oh well yeah when i signed back on in in england as people had told me to, um, a dude came at me through my fan page on uh, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It was like, I just saw you on Tinder. Sorry, I know this is a bit cheeky, but well, did you go out with you him? Wanna- no. Oh, I would have. Oh no! If way. anyone said cheeky to me in a message, I'd be like, "Well, yeah, I guess I have to suck your dick." I don't want to go out with a fan. No, I okay. Fans never want to go out with me i don't even know if i have fans well here's the thing it's not that i don't want to go out with the concept of a fan it's every fan who i've ever met who did want to go out with me is like uh like like imagine a uh a vampire who collects trains (laughs) and coloring books for adults that's that's the guy who comes up to me honestly i could color with a vampire like i'm okay with it (laughs) yeah uh no i've just gotten to a point in my life where i'm like I'll do anything. I'll try any man. And I think that's called desperation. And my mother used to say men can smell desperation. Yeah, everybody can. So I'm just stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I reek of desperation. So, okay, you're not on Tinder anymore, so you're on Raya. And I've yeah. mentioned Raya before on this show. And if you are just listening right now, Raya is a dating app for that's like very exclusive it was supposed to be for creatives quote unquote yes in the but it's industry just a quote lot unquote. of like instagram models and photographers yep because i'm finally on it i was waitlisted for three years how'd you get on it nicole i got on it because my friend eliza skinner <laughs> <laughs> knew how badly i wanted to be amongst the beautiful people and uh what was it? They emailed you and they yeah. were like, we'll they were like, have you one get, friend. Yeah, you got one friend in for free. Which like, is like no crazy. questions asked, just anybody. You tell us. And I was like, okay, Nicole. Which is bananas. And it's also bananas because I was told the criteria to getting on was having like a large Instagram following. Yeah, that's what I, well, I, but I've, I know people who have like no, the, the criteria I was told was like having not necessarily famous, but like, Credits. Yeah, having credits, having some kind of substantial career. Yes. And three years ago, I was doing pretty okay. And or maybe sure. it was two years ago. I don't remember. I don't even know how long the thing's been around. It's been more than a year. That's all I know. It's not as old as Girl Code. No. <laughs> so No, and that's uh where I got all my followers from, and I've been working pretty consistently since. And I was like, why won't they let me on? And my roommate, who was on SNL and has, you know, a decent career, has, like, way less Instagram followers. And I was like, so this isn't a follower thing. What Uh is it? And then I was like, I think it's racism. Yeah. I think I'm too fat and too black. I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense. Also, I have not seen any fat people, and I haven't seen any black people. Oh, I have seen, I've seen heavy dudes. Really? Oh, well. And black dudes. Tons of black dudes. Really? They only let me swipe a couple times a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they, you get to the end of it. I've done. I've gotten there where it's, it's like we're fostering a community. Yeah, and I was like, what fucking community? You just showed me someone in Australia. Like, what are you I doing? Know. That's what I Show hate. Show them all to me. That's what I hate. That it, you're supposed to be like a jet setter and date some dude in Denmark. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want that. Uh, one time, I accidentally swiped on a guy in Hong Kong, and he wrote back to me. Which also, people in Raya, like, m- tons of them don't right back mm-hmm. um myself included uh it's awful and one guy like immediately wrote me and was like hi you've swiped on me but i'm in hong kong and we'll never meet oh well what a bummer you he doesn't know goodbye. your life plans goodbye mutual crush haver and i was like well let's not get carried away <laughs> um, but it was it was so sad well well dumb on him you he doesn't know where you're gonna be he doesn't know where he's gonna be i know I know. Um, could, well, 
What what magic we could have made? You could have made magic. Yeah. I'm trying to make some Raya magic. It's I don't. It's not good. None I of them are good. Love it. I have it. <laughs> so it's men I and it women. Yeah. And the women. Oh, on you there, have it turned on to show both. Yes. Because you can turn that off if you want. No, I refuse. Well, great. I. The women all look like they oh. live in the sea and have their own Etsy store where they yes. sell beads for hair. Yes. Yeah. And they all are on the beach all the time. Mm-hmm. And they like bevel their legs Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they all have like titties. Yeah, I had stand up about it where I'm like, yeah, so I see what people are saying. And then it comes to me and I'm like, hi, I'm a pig that has a lollipop. I make jokes for you. You want to date me? I saw your profile (laughs) and I thought you looked beautiful. Well, thank you. And I thought it was very well done. And I hearted you. But we didn't match. Because I don't see girls. (laughs) Oh, there we go. Yeah. That is wild that they would show me women who didn't want to see other women. Well, they do that to men too. So uh, that's what I, all the dudes that I swipe on who don't connect with me, I'm like, you're gay. You're just gay. And they don't, they don't allow for people to filter that out in this app. So that's so weird. That's what I tell myself to, (laughs) to to tell me that I am, I'm so pretty. There's no other reason someone wouldn't want to be with me. Well, I don't know. I'm always confused. I've matched with so many pretty men, but it's not a swiping thing. You have to like press it. Oh yeah. So I'm like, you made an active choice to heart me, but like, why aren't you talking to me? I don't know. I want you to look at my... many of them. I want you to look at my Tinder profile. Okay. I have since... I've changed it. I added some new pictures. Also... What's your... What's your song on Raya? um, It's uh, Kaya, My Neck, My Back. (laughs) So on Raya, (laughs) you have to pick a song that goes with a slideshow of... I'll let you look at both. It's a... So it's a slideshow and of like your pictures and stuff and like videos and then a song, which is like so obnoxious. Mm-hmm. But here's my Tinder profile. It says I'm 28, which is a lie. <laughs> yeah. I can't change it on Facebook. It like just yeah, it won't let it won't me. Let also, I have several Facebook pages. It's a whole thing. I get it. I, I I've been there. Okay. Uh, your makeup is great. Thank you. That's the your, the face is beat. Thank um, you. Oh, this is an is this a new picture? Because this was just on Instagram. Which one's that one? That is my new picture. Yeah, that's very cute. So it's me in uh, in front of a pink wall in Malibu mm-hmm. in little I'm short overalls, little overalls, and a cute pins. stripey stripey uh, shirt. Yeah. Smiling. They say smiling is important. Really? Yeah, I like never smile in my photos. Oh, is it because they're like, oh, you'll come off as a bitch if you're not smiling? Yeah, yeah, I think so. No, I think that it's like like men, men actually want women who'll be, I don't know, nice to them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, don't swipe on me because I'll walking. beat your dick. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I'll beat it with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thirsty. Um, uh, that Oh, I've heard many times on this podcast about the bookshelf climbing <laughs> photo. And now I get to see it. I didn't realize you were wearing a a, 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 a wrist to ankle bodysuit. It's a full bodysuit. Uh-huh. When I think bodysuit, I think like, you know, basically like bathing suit sort of oh, thing. Oh, no, or like no. Leotard. This is a cat suit, if you will. It, wow. So it's like, it, it's like I could, someone could green screen out if the it was green screen, the bookshelf and make it like the side of a building. Uh, ooh, I would love if someone could do that. <laughs> you can find these pictures on my Facebook page. It's my Facebook fan page. It's a... Uh, Nicole Byer Comedy on Facebook. And then if you go to photos, there's an album there. And I need to update it. So, like, the pink wall picture is not there yet. But it will be, don't worry. And then the the Christmas photo. Yes. Where I'm humping a tree. And, and I've heard. And, yeah, it. Uh, okay. We were with a tree. It's, <laughs> if it was a boomerang, it would be hilarious. Sure. Ah, oh, dang. I got to get back to Michigan. It's not. Uh, I can't believe I fucked up that conversation so hard with that man. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's saying your head's not in the game. No, because I truly was like, my mind was blown that he knew where the tree was. And if I had just scrolled up before answering him, maybe I'll message him back and be like, hey, I'm so sorry I seem insane. No, it's done. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Because, I mean, his assessment was right. Your head isn't, wasn't also, in the game. his name is Derry. Or that's Dari. A, that's weird. I can't scream Dari when I'm riding I him. I bet you could try. Ooh, Dari! See, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you and uh, Clyde, mm-hmm. which is just adorable. It's saying, this one says, hey, 
we could be a family. Mm-hmm. And I'll bring this little dumb dog. Yeah. Oh, and then then we could be a nasty family. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's me in a heart. Yeah. Making like a mm, like face. I'm in a fuck you face. Yeah. That was chicken in Australia. Very cute. These are these are good pictures. Okay. Now press the home button twice. And then swipe to Raya. Oh, there we go. Oh, and the pink picture is your number one picture in that. It is. Okay. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's oh. your first. Oh, wow. I thought it was a dick one. Uh-uh. Dick is, well, Here, the dick is the first. the sound on. The dick is the first one in the, um... In the slideshow, so you oh. have your you have your profile picture mm-hmm. and then your slideshow. Oh, I guess so I as, fucked that up. As soon as we start the slideshow, oh, it's not you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a delightful profile. I mean, this says this is going to be fun. Don't stop, just do it, do it. Then you roll your tongue from I mean, the crack back to the front. <laughs> this is a great profile. <laughs> Thank you. You, your, your, your makeup and your hair look flawless. Thank you. You're looking fun. You're all over the place. You're out in the sunshine. I mean, which is like that's a deal breaker for me. But uh, I think for to other be people, out in the sun? I don't like. I don't. I don't want to see your skiing, your surfing picture. No, I don't like to go out in the sun. I don't want to do oh, those things with see, you. I love beaches, gonna, and that's mm. the most outdoorsy thing I'll ever do. Mm-mm, no, I'm not going on hikes. I'm not zip lining. I went to Mexico with Sashir, and we were zip lining. And I was like, "What is the weight limit for zip lining? I don't want to break this in a foreign country and die." And the man looked at me, and he went. Bah! I think you're okay. That's that's comforting. It wasn't comforting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, then I'm not doing this if you think I'll be okay. And thank God I didn't do it because this very big man who is like 6'4", but not like fat. He was just like a solid man. Yeah. He, at the end of the zip line, was like dipping into the water. Ugh. And then they had a huge problem getting him out. He like got stuck. And I was like, yeah, no, that, yeah. I'm not doing that. Yeah, no thanks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, um... I mean, I, yeah, I think I think it looks fun. I think that I think that's great. Profile. Thank you. Why do you think I'm single? <laughs> um, oh, so many reasons. Give them um, to me. Okay, I think. Well, I think that it's. I think it's really tough for, um, for outgoing for outgoing women who are successful and and driven and have a lot of opinions. Mm. Um, I think that it's not impossible, but I think that it's. That's not the that's not the traditional woman. No. And so the traditional roots of finding someone and making it work th- those don't really work either. You know? Mhm. Like did have you seen um Whitney Cummings last special? Ooh, it was on HBO. I think I watched yeah. maybe half of it. I I remember watching. I was I was like really surprised that she talks a bunch about how she's pretty much undateable. Um, and part of her thing is she's like, yeah, I thought she was married. No. Well, she was like, turns out guys are not super turned on by home ownership. <laughs> I worked so hard to build all this stuff, get all this stuff. Turns out that's not what impresses them. In fact, it turns a lot of them off. And I mean, I think that's good self-selection because I think mm-hmm. anyone who is turned off by that stuff, like I don't want to be with them and I don't want you to want to be with someone mm-hmm. like that. But I do think that it makes it it makes it tougher. And I think there's a lot of a lot of people here in this industry that we are both in who are very insecure, Um, both maybe fundamentally, but also like any whatever position you're at, wherever you're at with your career, it's not where you want it to be. Mm -hmm. No one is like, well, I mean, this is pretty much all I wanted to do. You know, if they have a TV show, they're like, why don't I have a movie? If they have a movie, they're like, why don't I have more movies and a Mm -hmm. series and get to direct them also? You know, so they're so everybody is insecure about something. And to have someone who is doing well and their own thing and also has ideas about the way they want things done and the next things they want to do, I think doesn't feel comforting to a lot of people. Mm hmm. Truly, as you started that, I was like, maybe I get myself a shitty apartment. So when I date a man, no. I can bring him to a shitty apartment 
instead of my house. No. <laughs> Which is such an insane thought. But honestly, that's the first thought that popped in my head. I was like, how can I make myself seem shittier than I am? Well, but no, I don't think Wait, that it's... Eliza. Oh, sorry. We have to take a break. And then we'll continue talking. <laughs> Dream of a break. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. What were you saying? Well, I was going to say that I don't think that that's everybody. I think that just like selects out, like we can't date the whole population. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be different things that cut people out. Cause like some people don't live in the same town as you. And then some people are not attracted to the same, to the gender that you are or the way that you look or the, or the age range. You might not be mm -hmm. in an appropriate age range uh, for them. And then also this in, I think there's a lot of industry stuff that is, that makes it prickly for people and difficult. Um, but it's not everybody. And I do think that like, it's also not easy for me. I, I am used to dating people who are more successful, more established than me. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a certain point where I was like, Ooh, that's a smaller pool than it used to be. I mean, good for me, Yeah. but it's gotten, a, it's gotten littler. Um, maybe it's time to start figuring out how to date people who are less successful than me, younger than me, mm -hmm. um, and what that dynamic is and like learn to be okay with that. But that also means that the dudes have to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. So I just think that it's, I think you and I are both on, like on a kind of new woman path that just hasn't been laid out. Like it, it, it doesn't look like dating used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't date a lot. I like really don't make it past like two or three dates with somebody. But I feel like everybody I've been with has been like pretty much my equal. Did they feel like that though? I have no idea. It's not anything I at three dates you talk about. Yeah. I th I don't know. I just think that it's like like I think most men are like they they want to take care of women and they know and it's obvious how mm -hmm. they how to do so. And with women who take care of themselves, it's less obvious what their role is mm -hmm. and where they fit in to take care of them. Yeah, I don't know how a man could ever take care of me. Like, I'm fine. Yeah. Like, I, like, w w girls who are, like, you know, ha ha are don't smush bugs and, <laughs> um, like, like to cook. They clean up. I mean, I... Don't even, like, when does that happen? When does a woman decide that they cook <laughs> and that they like Pinterest? Like, when does, is it a thing, like an age where that happens? Because I, I don't think I'm ever going to be like a traditional girly, girly woman. I don't know. Like, all the women I see in TVs and movies, I'll read scripts and shit and I'll be like, what? But the reason that you're not going to be a girly, girly woman, well, that's, that's two different things. First of all, the reason that you're not going to be a girly, girly woman is why you're going to be exactly who, right for the people that you do find. Mm -hmm. It's just how do we fucking find them? Yeah. But also the scripts that you write, those are a lot of those are written by dudes. And that's why those women feel completely uh, like unrelatable. You're right. Cause I'll like watch things and I'll be like, no woman's ever been like that. Yeah. I've and then you never look at the credits at the end. Who's like that. Like the whole, like a Manny Pixie dream girl who's just like whimsical and dances in and out of your life. Like I'm, there's very few women who are actually like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've accidentally been that to people. Have you? Yeah. And then look back and been like, oh my God, I was a Manic Pixie dream girl to them. Where I, I'd like ask weird questions and then be like, I can't talk to you for a while. And then just, I want weirdo. that. I want to be that. I'm too, I I think I get too involved like a hundred percent in things for me to be whimsical and in and out of someone's life. I like oh that I was just want to like be with somebody. When I say that I've been that to people, it's not on purpose. Like to them, I've looked like a manic pixie dream girl. Mm -hmm. I realize, but to me, I've been like, oh my god, uh, oh god, what do, what do I say to him? Say something interesting. No, don't. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Mm. Oh, oh, hey, what about? What about, and like ask the third question that I think of and then mm -hmm. be like, I'm thinking about this person too much. I have to not talk to them. And then like stop talking to them. So it's definitely oh, not me and being I like. And see how that seems yeah. to do these like, 
I don't know. She asked me what kind of potatoes I liked and then like never messaged me back. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's really funny. Yeah. Maybe I'll start asking weird questions. Yeah. I I don't know. I always try to say something a little strange just to be like, I'm a weirdo. And either they just stop talking or they're fucking boring. I'm trying to get I'm trying to work on vulnerability and be like being vulnerable. It is a tough thing to be vulnerable because you're inviting someone to hurt your feelings. Yeah. You're burying your soul and then being like, is this okay? But and then that... someone can go, no. <laughs> isn't that what love is, though? I inviting don't know. I don't think I've ever been in love. I think I've been in lust. Well, I think I've thought I was in love, but I don't think I've truly ever been in love. I don't know. I think love is a little bit. I think it's been built up into something it's not from movies. I think movies and TV shows, especially movies, have really screwed up all of this stuff. Okay, what do you think love is? I think it's like, well, I think it's two different things. I think at the beginning of a relationship, it's being wildly enamored with someone, mm -hmm. um, caring about them, like wanting to make them happy and just know everything about them, um, and just feeling better when they're around. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and thinking about like what are they like and how can i yeah like how can i how can i put that make that an important thing in my life mm -hmm. and then after that fades i think it becomes like a thing where it's about more commitment it's like i'm going to i'm going to make compromises for this person i think this person it, being with this person is better than being without this person and so when they um, when I have to make compromises for them or they annoy me, it's worth it because long term, this is what I want my life to be. But it's not like, yay them every day the way that it used to be. Mm. And I think that in movies, it's like, oh, you get hurt, hit with an arrow and just forever you, you're in love with them. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it's the special kind of love that's more, like, I feel like it's not that different from friendship love. It's not that different from familial love. They're like, shaded differently um but they're all different ways of caring about people that's why i like the sex in the city movie some people don't <laughs> like it but when miranda and steve break apart but then decide to get back together on that bridge it's like they made a compromise to forgive each other for the things that they didn't see eye to eye on and steve you know cheated on her yes right that's his name right steve yes Steve, yeah, Miranda, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Miranda, so she uh, forgave no. him for that. He forgave her for being an ice cold bitch, and they refound their love. Yeah. I think that's the perfect example of love. Yeah. Steve and Miranda from Sex and yeah, the City. Yeah, well, I mean, it is. It's like forgiving people and 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 weighing options with your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of uh. A lot of the great loves in my life have just been friends. Mm hmm Um and I don't know, I've I've yeah, I've been in love, but like I don't know. I guess the people I love the most in my life are all my friends. Yeah. Like I have friends who I'm like, oh, I love you dearly. And if anything ever happened to this friendship, I think I'd be really upset about it. Yeah. But then there's friends I've just let go because I'm like, fuck you, you're bad. Well, that's, you have to do that. Ugh, I just want a man in my life where I go, oh, you're so wonderful. You do things for me that I love. Honestly, like, I just am tired of having strange sex. Oh, I can't do it. It's really annoying. I can't do it. I can't do stranger sex. It just, it's uh, not it's exciting bad. to me. It's boring. I don't think it's boring. I think it's frustrating. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, you don't fucking know what I want and I have to tell you. And then I have to repeat myself because you're not fucking listening. Yeah. I just <sighs> want to be nice to somebody. That's my thing now. I just want somebody who like I can – because I feel like I've embarrassed myself with guys by being too nice. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. They say like, oh, don't be so nice. It'll, it'll, it'll drive them away if you're nice to them. But that's crazy. Yeah. I just want – I want to remember your birthday. I want to – get you a present because i because it because i thought of you mm -hmm. and that and it seemed, just seemed perfect and i want to like yeah like be nice but all of those things 
are apparently big turnoffs with dating. I might be your worst guest because I have no <laughs> answers. I do no, not know. It's okay. Uh, we're just like fuck of trying to figure it out together. Yeah. I guess I'm nice. Yeah, I guess I'm. Not, I don't really know. Like, I when I start dating someone, or I like try to like be involved and listen and remember things like more than I ever do anywhere else. Like. I'll forget lines at work, but like you tell me you like a, a, a taco with chicken and just tomato and guacamole, I'll remember that till I die. Yeah. And it's, I just, I try very hard and I feel like it's not reciprocated. Like I feel like when I'm on dates with dudes, I'm like constantly repeating myself. I went on this date with a guy and I was like, this isn't going anywhere. I probably will never go out with him again because I generally don't talk about work with people mm -hmm. because in L.A. people are either working or they're like aspiring to work doing the same thing or whatever. And he kept saying that he was like, you know, he wanted to write pilots. And I was like, I think you mean you want to write for a TV show. I don't think you just want to write pilots. Yeah. That seems crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you trying to sell them as well? Like, what is it? Nope. Just write them. And just, I just want to write pilots away. and like look at them. Yeah. Just like print them out and have them. Uh, and then I finally was just like, yeah, yeah, I do comedy, whatever. That's like how I make money. And then he was like, yeah, but how? And I was like, oh, I do shows and people pay me. And he's like, yeah, but like where? And I was like, I go on tour and stuff. He's like, oh, you tour. He like couldn't wrap his mind around it. And then later was like, wait, what do you do again? And I was like, I'm a comic. I'm a comedian. It was like. It was. It blew my mind how little he was listening to me. Wow! And at one point, I was just like, "I have to go. This man is so boring and did thinks you... his life is way more interesting than mine, and it's not." Did you go? No, I stayed. I've thought about that for a very long time, oh, like I, too long. I thought about that recently. I went on a date, not that recently, uh, months ago, with a a guy from Raya, mm -hmm. and uh, it was bad, and. He, like, he wanted to meet, but we were, he wanted to go to a movie, which I know is supposed to be a bad date, mm -hmm. but I fucking love it. Please, yes, let me get Wait, used to you. Why being, is that a bad date? Because you're I, not talking for two hours, but I'm like, I, I gotta want to talk to a stranger for two hours. Let me get them to non stranger level, <laughs> and then we can have two I hours like straight talking. Going to a movie I with love somebody, it. I love it because then it's you one of my automatically have something to talk about. Yes, like dinner in a movie. It should be movie and a dinner. Yes. Because you talk about the movie at dinner. Movie and a drink afterwards. Perfect. Yes. Um, so, but he wanted to, he wanted to meet up first before the movie. And he, so he picked uh, the Starbucks across the street, which I was like, oh, that <laughs> feels special. <laughs> um, I met him there. He had wet hair, didn't take his hood off the whole time, um, was negging me hard. And, um, then when Did we you were ask him why his hair was so wet. No, that's this is the thing that my therapist says to me all the time. Like, did you ask why the thing? And I'm always like, no, <laughs> no. I was just like, I'll go with this. Like, I live my life like ah, we'll figure it out. And I shouldn't. You're an improviser. <laughs> yeah. You're yes. Anding through life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to call out everything that's happening in the scene. <laughs> um, so so we're sitting there and yeah, he's like being kind of like dismissive and trying to make fun of me for stuff that I'm like not insecure about. And so I'm like, what are you? Wait, that's not a bad thing, what you're making fun of. Um, and then we got up to go across the street to this movie, which wasn't really a movie I wanted to see. What movie was it? It was the, the, some, the, the, the wellness cure or the price of wellness. It was something about wellness. It was like supposed to be kind of a horror thriller. Huh. Uh, it did not do well. Um, I guess not. I don't even know what movie that is. Yeah, it was one of those weeks where like I had everybody, we'd both seen everything except like one movie. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. Um, and so before we crossed the street to see it, he was like, oh, by the way, um, I was surprised. I guess people wanted to see this movie. And so they, they bought tickets. So like I didn't get tickets in advance. I was, well, I tried to buy tickets right before I walked over here and um, they, they only had two seats in the back of the theater. And I was like, oh, well, we can just use the tickets I bought. And he was like, what and i was like i bought tickets earlier today when we made plans for this the seats are three dollars each here it doesn't matter mm -hmm. so so i just bought so i just bought seats he was like how did you know and i was like i've been on a date before because like i've been on so many dates with dudes who don't buy tickets um 
And he suddenly started being so nice to me and was like, oh, wow, well, uh, 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 okay, sure. Uh, man, I can't believe you did that. Uh, hey, uh, I, I got the treats, huh? huh? And I was like, yeah, Wait, okay. Where, what movie theater are tickets $3? Some place in the valley. And Ew. Like, I know. But he had been like, you got to go. It's so great. It was pretty cool. It was like one of those okay. like motorized rec- recliner places. Ooh, mm-hmm. like at Universal City Walk? Mm. Uh, do they have that? Oh, they do now. Yes. yes. And that's where I saw Boo, Medea, a Halloween. Ugh, the first what or the second? The first one. I okay. still haven't seen the second one. Have Me you neither. seen the first one? I did. When she falls down the stairs, it's maybe the hardest I've ever laughed in oh, public. That's the, that's my least favorite Tyler Perry. I've never seen another Tyler Perry oh, movie. Oh, you've got to see Why Did I Get Married. That one, who, Janet Jackson's in that Janet one? Janet Jackson's in it. Um, uh, uh, um, what's her name? Uh, fuck, the singer. The singer, Angie Stone. No. <laughs> Jill Scott. I, Jill Scott is in it. Ah. Yes. Um, oh, it's great. It's uh, it got it even got a good review from the New York Times. Really? Yeah, like it's good. Um, huh. I did see it in a packed theater in Chicago, which like really upped the stakes. It's probably how you should always see a Tyler Perry movie. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we're he's suddenly being nice to me and I'm like, oh, I don't like that either. Like, so you kn- you were being a dick and now mm-hmm. suddenly I'm like not a not a doink. And so you're going to be nice to me. And I really was like, I just want to leave. I just want to go away. Like, can I just go get in my car and be like, we know this is not, no thank you, mm-hmm. goodbye. And I and I almost did, but then I like kind of wimped out and was like, yeah, I'll just sit through this whole movie. But I really wanted to I've just pull the ripcord. literally only left a date once <sighs> where he was like, do you want to go to another location? I was like, actually, yeah, my house. It was tough. It I, felt I felt like I was... Like, not hurting. Yeah, it felt like I was hurting him. It felt awful. Yeah. And then he got, like, kind of sad and then slowly walked me into my car and was like, I live over there. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, no. I hope you get home okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, and also he had, did he pick the place? Yeah. Right by where he lives? Yeah. 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 He was was the strangest man I've ever met. Whatever. It was yeah. a while ago. I haven't been on a date in a while. Yeah. Uh, just, I think it's uh, December slows down in LA. People are like in and out of town. Yeah. I was kind of started dating somebody, but like, I don't Oh, yeah. Know. How's that going? I don't know. I can't tell. Like, I feel like I just don't understand the current dating climate at all. I feel like as soon as you start dating somebody, especially with the, now that people, ghost and whatever like how do you feel about ghosting i hate it I, what would you rather someone do instead of ghosting um tell me tell me that you are too busy to talk to me so yes mm-hmm. you can still spare my feelings but say that you're too busy like to talk to me mm-hmm. so i don't like still try to get in contact with you and i know that you're not coming back and i can figure out the the no thanks. Unless I did something gross. Unless you're like, what's a gross you need thing to you've know- done to a man? I, am, I don't know, but I'm. But if it's something, because I I don't know. But if it's something I didn't notice that I did, if somebody was like, hey, FYI, you were like staring at my roommate's dick the entire time you met him, <laughs> and I don't want to be around you anymore, then I would be like, oh my god, thank you for telling uh, me. I didn't even know I needed to look out for myself doing that. I didn't so know that I was doing that. You like a soft let down i would rather a man was like oh we weren't clicking and that's it you know I'm what so sorry i'll take that also i guess i was trying to like pitch something that someone would go for because i feel like people well, are so scared to say that i don't understand why people can't just go this is bad yeah i guess or just I mean, this doesn't fit this doesn't fit right i've for me. ghosted people because i didn't want to hurt their feelings but then after it happened to me a bunch i was like oh this sucks i'm gonna just tell people or like let them know yeah. I mean, me leaving that man on that date was like very you clear. Let him know. Yeah. It was like goodbye. And then I've told guys, this one guy, I was like, this was in July, maybe we went out. And he's like, when are you free again? I was like, actually, I'm not free until Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you told him. But then he texted me Whoa. right after Thanksgiving. And I was like, he I'm put it in his calendar. pretty busy until the 4th of July. Oh. So so you're fun. I really hope he messages me again on the 4th of July. Would you go out with him if he does? No. And then I'll give him <laughs> another holiday, Labor Day. And if we make it all the way back to Thanksgiving, then I'll go out with him okay. again. Um. Yeah, I don't think they should call it ghosting. I think they should call it like, like, 
leaving a rabbit in a shoebox under your bed. <laughs> You're like, I know it's there. Um, I should uh, feed it. I should just oh, feed it. It's like, it uh, 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 It'll die. It'll die. It'll die it's, on its own. Like, that's the worst way to so kill something. Funny. It's awful. And uh, yeah, so not not that. Don't ghost. But because of that, I feel like I don't. I. It's so hard. Like, I'll go out with somebody and then a few times be like, are we dating? I don't know if we're dating. I mean, it's really hard to understand if you're dating someone. This guy. I listen for context clues or for them too. to actually go, oh, on this, before our date. I'm like, oh, okay, we're dating. Yeah. And this is another thing where, as I said, my therapist will be like, do you ask? And I'm like, God, no. Well, that you <laughs> can't ask. Your therapist is too ballsy. <laughs> you can't just ask someone if you're dating. I mean, in my head, I'm the type of person who would fully be like, hey, are we dating? No. I'm cool with it either way. But then I don't. You um, can't. Yeah. I'm also a person who, like, point blank asks people stuff. But, like, asking someone if you're dating is, like, it's, like, it's very telling. It's, like, either you want to be dating or you're, like, too dumb to understand that it's been well, a long time and, and you are dating. That's the other thing. I'm not always sure of my answer. So I'm sort of like, yeah. when they have something they need to, or if I have something I have to tell them, okay. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, let's just be wild children about this. Oh, um, wait. Okay. So I was talking on a different podcast about how uh, female, I'm like completely changing the subject because it. it like popped in my head. Yeah. I said that female improv teachers don't date yes. their students. <laughs> and you text me and you're like, I got engaged to one. I did. I got so engaged I to my students. I would love to hear about that because I didn't know that. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, crazy. I'm clearly not married to him now. He's married to another one of my students and they have a child. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a dream. <laughs> What yeah. a dream scenario. He was one he was one of my favorite students, obviously. Yes. Um, but I, I didn't really have that in my head. Uh, but I had noticed he was tall. Mm -hmm. Um and after my class was over, uh he I had broken up with a another one of your guests. <laughs> um uh -huh. another How long did you teacher. date that guest? Uh two years. Ah. Yeah, that's a real thing. That that's that is a long time. I, when I was obsessed with him, <laughs> felt like I went online. I was like, I want to look at more pictures of him. We can say who it was, right? He oh, I don't mind. think I don't think he'll care. Yeah, Will Hines. Yes. It just felt weird that we were getting to the point of like, <laughs> the man in question. <laughs> that man we can't say. <laughs> yeah. But I found a, uh, what is it called? Flickr? A Flickr account uh -huh. where there's pictures of the two of you. And I was like, that's the kind of woman he likes. He likes them white. <laughs> And I was really but sad. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't. He likes all kinds. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was very. It, you tell yourself things. Yeah. But now I know why he won't date me, and I think the answer was he just wasn't feeling it. Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, I have my own ex girlfriend opinions, uh, but most of them boil down to he's a nice guy and I like him. Um, I think he's great. Yeah. And even now, if he said, Nicole Byer, let's go to Mexico and live there for the rest of our lives, I would go, great, Will Hines, let's do it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's an insane thing to say? No. For whatever reason, I love him so much. No, I'm just trying not to like comment on my ex-boyfriend on a podcast oh sure yes i put you in a um, very wild situation no, no, it's fine it's fine um we can cut all this out no it's okay but you guys uh i i would be happy for you should that happen <laughs> should you end up in mexico with my ex-boyfriend <laughs> but here's I would, the thing i, I would don't send think you roses either of us would be happy after two weeks so that was that would be what i would say would be like <laughs> what have we done yep yeah um but uh yeah so i was single and um and just and newly single, so really it was on my mind a lot, mm -hmm. and really trying to figure it out. And the student of mine was like, "Oh, we got a, she's great. I I should find somebody for her to date." And this, according to him, I was like trying to think uh -huh. of somebody to date. Um, I think because he ran into me on the train or something, and then was like, "Who should it be? Oh, wait, me. I'm a nice guy. What about me?" And so he asked me out, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Sure, sure, why not?" Mm -hmm. But you'll notice that story wasn't. We were both wild with passion through no, the whole class. We were both like, "These are nice people." Yeah, yeah. And so it was a it was a good relationship for a while, and then it didn't work for us, and we wanted very different things. And how long did you date? Three years. Damn. No, two, 
dang no yeah three years would you call yourself a serial monogamist fully yes monogamist that's what i that's what i am monogamist monogamist. i like as i said i like to be nice to somebody i like to hunker down get some little throw blankets did you move in together we did how many men have you lived with just him Oh, okay. That well, sounded no, wait, like two. a really mean two. question. Two. How many men have you lived when I was with? In, when I was in college, I started dating my roommate. So oh. I was already living with him and then I started dating. That's, I've only really lived with a bunch of gay men. That sounds like a dream. <sighs> yeah. Well, the current gay man has a boyfriend and... Ooh, that's rubbing it in your face. It kind of is. Yeah. yeah. And they keep making cookies and giggling. Oh, come on. And I am like, handle that. I fucking hate Christmas. And you're making Christmas cookies every night and just like having the time of your lives. Yeah. I, have you ever thought about working with like a matchmaker? I think it would be pointless. Really? Yes. Why? Because black women are not desirable. <laughs> But I, <laughs> and I don't want to like, and I assume the people with money aren't, they're not looking for a fat black woman. I don't think that's, I, well, I don't know what people are looking for, but I don't think that that, that can't possibly be completely true. Um, some people aren't, but some people, that's exactly what they're looking for, right? Sure. I feel like, I feel like one of the uh, fallout things that I really want to have happen with this whole Weinstein thing mm-hmm. is like people getting in touch especially bad feeling like they can be attracted to what they're actually attracted to, mm-hmm. not just what movies and TV tell them they're supposed to be. Because I think it's going to be, if they, if they were really honest, it would be a wild tapestry of yeah, stuff. Cause I'm attracted to dumpster looking dudes, beautiful men. Yeah. I'm attracted to like literally people who look like a, a soda can. Well, and the thing that to me, the problem is the, the apps are the least of what I'm attracted to. Like, I am attracted to the way somebody moves and smells and laughs and all the things that like you only see when you're in a room with them. Mm-hmm. And so you think you can like kind of get an idea of it from these apps and then you meet them and you're like, oh, you smell wrong. Not like bad, but just wrong. Yeah. And you're, you you move like a snake and I, it makes <laughs> my skin crawl. I can't stand any of yeah, it. Dating apps, uh, when you meet up with someone off a of dating, it's just a blind date. Yeah. You don't know what their voice sounds like. Sometimes they sound like Mickey Mouse and you're like, the fuck? But I wonder, like, the the thing, the reason I brought up a matchmaker is because I feel like someone who can assess you and see what, see what you are and what is attractive about mm-hmm. you and then see what is attractive about somebody and put those together. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. I just... I don't think I'll find a matchmaker whose expertise is fat black women. (laughs) Well, if somebody can figure that out and become that, I think they would clean up. It would be great because there's a lot of fat black ladies with money Mm -hmm. (laughs) who are just looking for their equal. Yeah. Eliza Skinner, can I ask you a question? Yes. Why won't you date me? (sighs) Okay. Imagine you're a man. (laughs) Or you're attracted to women. Why won't you date me? Okay, I'm 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 putting myself in the zone. Or would you? Um, it's okay if you won't. Very few people have said that they would. Well, I will say this: for, I would for sure contact you <gasps> off of that that profile. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know if there would be magic between us. Okay, I, I can't put myself in like. Because again, as I said, the moves, the smells, the sounds. Do I smell bad? No, but it's like... Do I sound bad? Well, okay, now, <laughs> yes. Um, but I feel like, like, honestly, I feel like this is a question I'm going to... I should have known I would be answering. Um, <laughs> but also we'll be thinking about, like, for weeks. Like, It's okay. Would I, would I date Nicole? I don't I know. I think if you're thinking this long and hard about it, you wouldn't. And that's I would, okay. I would con- Here's what I can say for sure. I would definitely contact you off of that. Uh-huh. And I would be in a relationship with you. <gasps> that sounds like that would be fun. That Thank would be nice. You. That would be fun and comforting, which is what a relationship should be. Oh, boy. I don't Thank understand you. the in-between part. That's, the, that's my big problem. That's funny that you don't want to go on dates with me to get to know me. <laughs> you just want to be in a relationship <laughs> with me. But that's how I feel about that- Men too. Is great. Well, yeah, getting to know someone is the, it's not fun. It's the worst part. And then you have to like remember things. Yep. Here's my thing. I can't imagine, I can't imagine dating someone for like two years and then being like, oh, I've known, I know everything about you and I'm done. 
Yeah, I've done that a bunch of times. I I don't think I can do it. I've never, yeah, I've never been like a full fledged relationship. They're they're bumpy. They seem bumpy, but they're also comforting and nice. Yeah, I don't know how I would fare in a real relationship. Also, I mean, I don't know. Uh, this town is just tough for it for is and i kind of every time i go on tour i'm like maybe i'll just import a boy i think you should i should just find one but then like all the ones i've spoken to at my shows have been like isn't that what amy should be little idiots no i believe uh, she met him on raya oh uh, fucking raya i'm like 99 percent sure uh, that's how they met but there is one percent that i'm unsure because i don't know her <laughs> yeah me neither I've never once spoken to her, so like I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that's how they met. Yeah, I just feel like this town is full of so many young, beautiful people because that's who comes here, and then they leave when they're 28, and they're like, "Oh, this mm -hmm. was dumb. This was bad." And uh, so all these young, beautiful people are here, and they're all available. So while I'm like, "You could date me," or you could date one of them, and they're like, "I think what you're doing is amazing. <laughs> I can't even believe it." Like, wait a minute. You wrote a whole pilot? You wrote a bunch of pilots? <laughs> That's so amazing. And, or me being like, mm, you could punch it up and try to submit it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's a mean, rough town for it. It is. And then I'm like, am I going to just die alone? I might. And I thought I had my roommate, but he's now in a relationship. So yeah, I might die alone. Uh, well, on the one hand, we all do. And on the other hand, you can find some... You can always figure out a different... There are things about your life you can control. My plan for my life is mm -hmm. golden girls. Like, mm -hmm. get a house, have a few other girls live in there. Should nothing else work out? I mean, that's basically what's happening right now. Yeah. I've been trying to get my very dear friend who lives in Australia, John, to come live with me with his boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I was like, it'll be fun. You can decorate your the the back house however you want. It'll be great. You live with me. It'll be wonderful. Here's one thing that maybe is helpful, because I feel like all your guests have been really insightful, and I am not. Um, but my therapist <laughs> said that dating is all about just getting to know somebody. Yes. And it's just about, like, you know, g getting to know them and, getting, and letting them get to know you. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of times I can be uh, performative. And, like, entertain people mm -hmm. instead of being, like, Ooh, here, here's actual me, and I want to know more about actual you. I mean, it is hard as a performer, I think, to let your guard down. Because, like, you do it sometimes in front of an audience, or at least, I don't know. I'm but you're still totally real. in control of that. Yes. Yes, I'm in control. I'm the one with the microphone. You're the one who came to see me. I'm going to tell you my truths, but they are peppered with jokes. And then it's like talking to somebody. To show you why I'm not going to really be hurt yeah. about this truth. Yes. I made a joke. Because I made a joke about it. And you're, we're all laughing at it. And some of it does come from pain, but a lot of it is like just, you know, my what my thoughts are. I don't know. Uh, but then talking to a person... I tr like I try not to tell too many jokes or be too funny, but then I'm like, ah, but I do love to laugh. Me too. And then it just gets really cloudy. Yeah. As to like how much you, because I've been a performative person my whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when I was little, my grandmother would always be like, up oh, and there she goes, she's performing for us. And then after a while, like as I got older, I was like, well, no, I'm not performing. I like to laugh and I like to hear you laugh, but like this is who I am at this point and it's not a performance. So it's like a real hard, I think it's a hard wall to break through to be like, I am funny. I do like to laugh, but I am being real with you. And like, I made a joke about it, but like I am talking about something real. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't want to feel like, Oh, I have to not be myself. Yeah. And part of being yourself is doing bits and joking mm -hmm. around. Uh, I was on a date with a guy, and he was kind of monologuing to me. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it was a little bit annoying, but then I started thinking, like, oh, this is his version of doing bits. Ah. This is where he feels comfortable and is still trying to reach out to me, mm -hmm. but in a way that he's kind of controlling. And, had, and so I had to, like, kind of break it and 
start asking him questions like that weren't about like I started asking him questions about his childhood and being like, do you want to hear about me? And like mm-hmm. kind of it was like the, the sewing card version of a conversation. I really hate it when you have to go, OK, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Can I tell you something about myself? And I feel like it happens a lot with men. Yeah. Because they're not interested in you. Well, sometimes it's because they're not interested in you, but sometimes it's because they're nervous. And oh, they don't know what that. else to say. And and it's hard to tell the difference, but I, I try to allow for that option sometimes. Mm-hmm. If it's somebody who looks like they got a good dick. <laughs> <laughs> I do love dick. They're, and on that they're pretty note, great. Eliza, thank you so much for coming thank here. Thank you for having me. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, I have a new podcast, but I don't know when it's going to be out. What's so. it called? So when it comes out, people will know. It's called Now That's What I Call Playlist. And then you ask me to be on it, and hopefully you'll let me be on it. Oh, I can't wait. And when is Drop the Mic? When is, is it on now? Yeah, or? well, I mean, I think we're, got, we're off for a couple of weeks for the holidays. But yeah, it's on Tuesday nights um, on TBS. And yeah, Celebrities Rap Battling, hosted by Method Man. He's a dream. I thought it was hosted by a lady. Method Man and Haley Baldwin. She's the (laughs) (laughs) co-host. Okay. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and rate it five stars. And if you leave a fun comment where you hit on me, um, I'll read them. So uh, Sarah Hirsch on December 15th said, let's bump tacos, which isn't (laughs) terrible, but very funny. I like it. King on December 18th said, 10 out of 10 recommended. Would love a naked yoga video, but please don't show your feet. That's for family only. I don't really understand that, <laughs> but Maybe thank he's trying you. trying to stand out. This one says, Weiger loves hot salad. He's referencing a different podcast yeah. called Doughboys that I'm not a host on. And he said, uh, I'd like for my squinty eyed face under your porn star puss. I'd eat you like you're a delicious bag of Taco Bell. I am too shy to tell to your face. Let's let's watch Star Wars and chill. He literally is referencing a whole other podcast that I just did. He's, Interesting. He's, he's letting you know he's listening to you everywhere. Ah, this other person says, okay, face, great penis. <laughs> I love Nicole. I want to see her porno pussy. <laughs> and... It'd be great if she'd sit on my face. Also, listen to this show. It's great. Hit me up, Nicole. And that's it. Nobody's been pretty... I've asked people to be nasty. I know. And nobody has been nasty. Some of those were pretty nasty. No, what I'm looking for is I want to I wanna use you as a puppet with my hand up your puss. I don't okay. know. Okay. So, like, impossible nasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe that's what I'm looking for, fantastical nasty. Yeah, send her fantastical nasty. Are you looking for, like, um, tentacle porn kind of stuff? Not tentacle porn, but, like, I want to eat your pussy like it's a hot cup of soup. Do you know there's a, uh, th- wait, but you hate soup. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, but I like the imagery of someone <laughs> dipping a spoon in me. <laughs> I think it's really funny. Do you know there's a fetish that's, like, wanting to be consumed by a woman? Like, Ew. And so it's an impossible thing, so people just draw pictures of it. So you can have you could find like crayon drawn pictures of full grown men inside of women. That's, that's wild. Their, yeah, that's so the craziest thing. That's I've ever a fantastic, heard. I want fantastical that. one. Anywho, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, that's it. Bye bye. <laughs> That was a HeadGum Podcast.